Hey everybody, Sean here from the blackpage.net and we have drummer extraordinary Tony Faginson from Eve 6. You will remember these fellas. Uh, huge, huge hits. And so Tony and his friend Jerry Fitzgerald um, have developed an app for drummers um, that uh, I'll let Tony kind of explain the new Show One app. What is it, Tony? Yeah, hey, uh, thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, so Show One is, in a nutshell, it's an app for playing backing tracks uh, live. Um, you know, it, it is you know somewhat geared toward drummers, but it's also geared to other musicians as well, whoever... Okay. Whoever in the in the group or in their project kind of runs the backing tracks live. Gotcha. Um, uh, you know, we from playing in my band Eve Six, and actually the, my partner in the app project, Jerry, it, was uh, our stage manager in the band and also okay. kind of drum, drum tech. So, you know, a few years ago, I'll just kind of give you the history of it. I guess yeah. a few years ago, we had been touring a lot and. Um, you know, there was all sorts of different ways that we had tried to kind of run our tracks. We had a laptop for a while. We had Ableton. We had all these other systems. We had an SPDS, right. a Roland SPDS, which yeah. I'm sure your uh, your uh, viewers will know about. Um, and you know, they all had their ups and their downs. And uh, you know, we we had a system that was working pretty well. But you know, one night after a show, we just got to talking. Like, man, it would be great if there was a really good professional. Uh, like basically an iOS way to do this for right. your, your iPhone or your iPad. And, you know, that was kind of the beginning of it. And we just sort of took it from there. And, you know, eventually we came up with, you know, the show one app, which is essentially a way to, for bands, for solo artists, for, you know, uh, worship groups, church groups, you know, national touring acts, whatever, whatever. There's so many acts now that play along to some kind of backing tracks, whether right. it's, you know, just a, a, a tambourine loop going on or a full, you know, orchestra, string section, background vocals, other guitars, yeah. you name it. It's very common nowadays. So um, th this is a, a an app for your iPhone or your iPad or your iPod touch that will, you know, allow you to, to, to play along to them easily and gives you some key features that we feel are important for uh, a musician to to have in order to do it easily and without too much headache. So. Gotcha. That's kind of the the nutshell. I won't go too into details until you ask some questions, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's the gist of it, basically. Backing tracks app for iOS. Excellent. So now, um, like every other, um, you know, sort of backing track setup, uh, I know for myself and many musicians, you're kind of looking for a one stop shop. You know, you don't want yeah. you know the, you don't want the daisy chain of things. And it sounds like this app is exactly. delivers just that. Very simple, um, and I see as well on the, from the reviews and, and the information I was sent. So it does split the signal. It splits for the you know the the click and what have you, and then the music. So what your audience is hearing and what you're hearing, of course, are two different things. So now, is it really just that simple, Tony? It's just on your iPhone. It's right there. It is that simple. You know, the, the main thing with backing tracks is kind of like you just just started to say. The audience needs to hear one thing and the yeah. musicians need to hear something else. Yeah. Audience needs to hear ju just the music, whatever you have on your tracks that you're playing along to. Yeah. The musician needs to be able to hear that, but they also most of the time need to be able to hear some kind of a timekeeper, particularly for drummers. You know, right. you, need, you need a click track. Yeah. And, you know, I, so many other bands that I know or friends with have worked with. It's just a pain in the ass because you either have to put everything into a DAW and have the full laptop and all this stuff running yeah. right there, or you need to prepare your tracks with a click track, you know, out one side that you're going to then play, you know, split them that way. And you have to kind of pre-prepare everything. And we, we try to take all that out of it. So okay. basically you put your audio in, okay. say you have a song that has some extra background vocals and guitar parts that you're going to play along to. You, all you need to know is the tempo. You put that track into show one, it gives you the click automatically. So okay. you don't have to prepare that or anything. Wow. And then like you said, it if all you have is your phone or your iPad, it'll split the audio automatically. So out one side is the click track along with the music, that, that would go to the drummer. Right. And then out the other side, that's just the music that would go to you know, the other musicians and the audience and everything. Right. And, you know, the app just takes care of it for you. You don't have to prepare click tracks. You know, you can choose different click sounds. And the, the, one of the big things, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, is that, of course, you can 
arrange all your songs into different set lists, right. uh, whatever order you want, and also adjust the tempo of all your songs after they're already in the app so you don't need to like, for instance, if you're playing in rehearsal and it was a very common thing that I came across with was, uh, you know, you're playing a song and it feels slow. You're like playing to your tracks and maybe those tracks the, the, on the recorded version, it, it was the right tempo, but live you want to, you want to play, play it a little faster. Right. Well, it, it, you know, with this app, you can just do it, you know, in the blink of an eye, basically change the tempo. It keeps all the tracks in, uh, you know, keeps the pitch the same. Yep. You can change the tempo independently of pitch and vice versa. If you need to, change the key, you know, for, for a, a, a change, your vocalist has a cold that day or something. Wow. And Hey, we need to change this. I need to drop this a whole step. Very easy to do all within the app. Try to keep things like that fluid for you. So right. the musicians can just get right to playing the music and you don't have to like go back and rebounce your tracks and prepare click tracks and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of jumped ahead there, but yeah, <laughs> now, no, we yeah. should, we should explain um, for the average musician say the club player maybe not necessarily on a sure. stadium tour um he or she can uh, they can find the backing tracks maybe their guitar player shares it through like right. soundcloud or they share it through another sort of online sharing platform this is the other mm -hmm. thing i thought was pretty cool you can download these tracks and up and then upload them to your to your uh, show one app from like the dropbox and all this kind of stuff right yeah so you know Basically, you know, we're not providing the tracks for you. This is right. for whatever music, whatever the musician wants to play along to. Yeah. So basically, you know, the app can sync up with any of the major cloud services. So, you know, if you've got like a folder yep. in your Dropbox account that has all your backing tracks, it just it'll access that right away. You just pull the ones in that you need, sticks them in the app and you're good to go. It works with uh, Google Drive, iCloud, um, uh, Box.com and Dropbox. We might add a couple more, but those are the major ones right now, and we figure most people has one of those accounts. So yeah. it's very easy to get audio into into Show One. You could also plug into the computer and have it uh, with the iTunes, you know, sync sync with through iTunes as well. Gotcha. So very easy to get audio in there, yeah. And yeah, like you said, if the guitar player is the guy that's you know bouncing down your tracks, he just stick gives them to you in email or Dropbox, whatever, and you stick them in there, and, and you're good to go. Right. And so we can, we can also, we can use this in a club date. We could, I mean, oh, professional yeah. yourself, you're using this on tour. Um, I did. You've been using it for how long, Tony? Well, we, you know, we launched the app over the summer in mid July, actually under a different name. That's gotcha. sort of, uh, we, the app is now show one. We originally launched it as side stage. Okay. Uh, we, we changed the name for some sort of trademark issues, but basically long story short, I just so happened to be on tour with uh, my band Eve Six over the whole summer. And it was a perfect, you know, kind of a guinea, I was the perfect guinea pig for right. the app as, <laughs> as we were launching. And, you know, not not just because, you know, I, I helped create the app, but as a user, as a musician, a real live musician that was playing, you know, I, I think we played 31 shows on that tour. I used it the whole time, never once did it, it skip or crash or anything. And so I can say as a musician, that it, it really works great. It served its purpose really well. And we were able to, you know, really quickly change things as needed because, you know, we kind of changed the set a little bit as yep. we went from show to show. Yep. So, yeah, it works great on a tour. I mean, we really tried to make it accessible for all styles of musicians, you know. Right. Anyone that has any need to play along to some kind of recorded music, even if you're a street musician, you know, yeah. and like, you know, a lot of street musicians now, they have kind of some kind of playback that they're playing along to it's great for them as well. You may not even need the click track, but you can still use the show one, you know, track editing features like tempo pitch. Yeah. You can add voice counts. You can trim the end or beginning of the song in case, Hey, you know, we don't need that eight bar intro tonight. Just right. trim it right off wow. without again, having to go back and rebounce them or have your entire, you know, Ableton or pro tools or logic set up right there. So, right. yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah, it works for, you know, cover bands, you know, international touring bands. I mean, anyone that has backing tracks that doesn't want to spend, you know, 800 bucks on an SPDS or yeah. bring their entire, you know, recording rig out with them, yeah. that's who it's made for. <laughs> and so, I mean, the price is right too on this thing. It like, it's less than 10 bucks to, to buy the, bucks. the full version. That's right. It's, uh, it's 899 right now. It's 899 for the unlocked version. So, 
you know, the, the free version. It's basically free to download and try, and you pretty much get an almost full, fully featured uh, version of the app, but you can only import two of your own okay. songs. So that's the free version. It's yeah. just go on, on the App Store, the iOS App Store. It's uh, iOS only. Eventually, we'll, we'll get to Android, but we're, we're focusing on iOS at the moment. And then, yeah, you unlock it for eight ninety nine, and then you can import unlimited tracks. And you also have access to the store, the in-app store, which is still just kind of beginning. But that's where we'll have extra features that, you know, you'll be able to kind of buy as add-ons okay. or additional click, click sounds and things like that. So, you know, we, we really want this to be accessible to a- any type of musician. And, um, and yeah, so hopefully the price, uh, the price reflects that. Um, Tony, this must be an interesting, uh, must have been an interesting challenge. That I, my sort of limited knowledge of, of apps is uh, such that I do know that it's it's can be complex, and this sounds like something that you've spent a lot of time on. What uh, what was the pro? Like, was it a long process? It sounds like there was a lot of uh, maybe math and computers involved in this. <laughs> There, there, there certainly was. Um, I'll answer that question in a couple parts. First of all, it was a, a bit of a long process over the last few years. Like I said, it was about three years ago that we actually wow. kind of hatched the idea for it. And we went through a, a, a few different you know, iterations of how it would come to be. We, we thought of it as a, a hardware piece for a while, not part of you know a, an iPhone thing. And then we went back to that. So there's a lot of back and forth, but it, through that, we really refined you know, I think what we wanted it to feel like and what we wanted it to do. And then when it came time to actually making it, I mean, I will say this, neither Jerry nor I are programmers at all. We're, right. We didn't do the coding. We actually hired another company okay. and, and gave them the very specific directions and worked with them on how it was going to look, what it was going to do, what this needed to do, what that button needed to do. And they did all the, they did the hard work, basically. Yeah, they but did we, the heavy uh, lifting. You know, they did the heavy lifting. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're developers, but we hired an actual development company called Hello World Engineering, great guys up in San Francisco that uh, you know actually did the coding and and know the iOS world of coding. Right. Um, but you know the idea and the and the layout and all of that and what it's supposed to do is is from us, and it definitely took a while to you know to refine it. And you know, in a perfect world, you can put every feature that you want in there, but that takes a long time. And yeah. there are certainly some things that we'll want to keep adding as we go. Sure. That's the great thing about the iOS format too, is you can, or the mobile format, is you can, hey, in next month, there's going to be some new features in the new update and so on and so forth. So right. it'll keep getting better and more refined with more features and more additional things as we go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're we're really happy with how it how it's going right now. We're starting to get some nice user feedback and some real musicians out there using it. So, um, you know, one thing I wanted to say before I before I forget is uh, another key aspect of the app is that you can use it in a four a four channel mode uh, oh, wow. if you have an if you have an interface connected to your because there's a lot of audio interfaces now for yep. iPads and iPhones. Yep. You know, there's the there's stuff from Native Instruments. There's of course the uh, the Apogee Duet. There's stuff from Novation, from Focusrite. A lot of great interfaces out there. And so, if you have one of those that has four outputs, you can actually use Show One in four output mode. And the, the big thing with that is it allows you to send your tracks. You don't need to split it out the headphone jack. You'll send your tracks full stereo to the audience and to the musicians, and be able to have independent control of the click and the voice counts and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it, eventually we're going to keep expanding that even further. But for now, that is a pretty cool thing that I know a lot of musicians that I talked to when we were developing this are like, hey, it's, you know, it's cool to split the audio out the headphone jack, but it'd be really good to not have to, you know, send only a mono signal to the, right. the audience. Yeah. In four output mode, you're able to do that. You just need the right interface. And there, there's some, like the Native Instruments Tractor 2, is under a hundred bucks. So yeah. if you want to be a little more pro, you can get one of those and show one will work with them really well. Awesome. Uh, show one right now available on the, in the app store, the iPhone app yep. store. Uh, like we said, eight ninety nine. Uh, Tony, when can we see you using it next with Eve six? <laughs> uh, we're, we're looking into that probably sometime next year. I'd imagine, um, you know, uh, uh, we're talking to our agent and kind of figuring out what the right opportunities for next year will be but 
I do plan on using it. You know, there's a little dirty secrets. Uh, Eve six does play to some backing tracks. Uh, we all, know, I think <laughs> in 2015, I mean, I, I don't think anyone really minds. No. Everyone does it. No. You know, uh, what I always like to say is, you know, to some might think, you know, backing tracks is kind of a dirty word or whatever. Um, I say they can make a great band just a little bit greater, but they can't make a bad band good. You know what I mean? Like you can't, it's all about the artists. It's all about the music. It's all about, you know, the performances and the songs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The backing tracks really are the icing on the cake, um, yeah. but the cake's got to be good to begin with. So, That's right. um, you know, some, some artists use them more than others. You know, like I said, one acts backing tracks might be, you know, uh, a tambourine loop in one section and then the next artist could be the entire track, the entire band. Exactly. So, Hey, it's whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. Uh, my band, we do use them a little bit, but it's really just for some additional stuff that we had in the studio that, uh, you know, we don't, we, we don't, we can't bring another three or four musicians on the road with us. It'd be great too, exactly. but yeah. you know how it is. So yeah. that that's kind of the vibe and uh, we will be using it next year, probably next summer. So uh, awesome. keep an eye out for us. Yeah. Black page readers. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, you can Thanks, find the app. We're going to put the link in the uh, article here. So just click on the right. link and you'll find uh, we're going to take you to the website of show one. There's some great video tutorials there. Tony, right. uh, he's, he's using it live and you can see exactly how this thing works. Highly recommend it for anyone, especially if you're out there touring. Uh, Thanks, like Sean. we said, you know, backing tracks might have been a swear word back in the 90s or the early <laughs> 2000s. However, they are a necessity. And if you're working with any uh, professional artist, absolutely, you need to know how to use these things. Um, so many drummers that I've met, top tier players, uh, are actually Ableton proficient. They know how to use Apogee. They know how to use Native Instruments. Go. I mean, that's the thing. That's this. This is the new age, folks. So thank you very much. I want to... Sean, I want to add two more things real quick, yeah. if we could. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just another thing, if you're, uh, you know, so whoever's listening, if you kind of have your setup and you've got your laptop and your SPDS and you don't want to mess with that, totally cool. Show One works as a great backup, too. Wonderful. So if, it's, so if you're like got fly, a fly date or just one-offs or whatever and you don't want to take the whole rig, you can, you know, Show One makes a perfect fly rig. It's a great backup wow. in case any of that stuff goes down. You can just have your set there ready to go. And what we're also aiming at a bit, and it's going to continue to go this way as we develop a little more as an instructional tool, right. because you know it adds the yeah. click track. It's really good for um, you know drum instructors to like slow down uh, sections, uh, tough sections of the song with a click to practice to, right. or just just a practicing musician in general that wants yeah. a click track and be able to change pitch, change tempo really easily. Uh, you know, it's it's really good for that as well. It's a good practice tool. So just something to keep in mind in case you're not someone that's using backing tracks right now or or whatever. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Great, Sean. Thanks so much. And yeah, show one. Check out the website. Check it out in the app store. And let us know what you think. Uh, we're we're very accessible. So send us comments or questions. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much.